Welcome to the EXP group discussion of ACCA paper F2. Today we want to focus on a practical numerical example which will illustrate both the marginal costing and absorption costing methods. Now let's start with uh, some basic data on a production company. We have, uh, which ha sells a product at $120 per unit. And here we have a simplified cost card, which shows us that direct materials and direct labor cost $45 per unit and $18 respectively, and variable production overheads are $9 per unit. So we have total variable costs of $72. And these are variable production costs one should emphasize, because these are production-related uh, data. And there's a variable selling cost of $2 per unit in addition. Now, the scenario that we want to illustrate uh, covers two years. And we have a budgeted uh, production level expressed in units. We have an actual production achieved in each of the two years. and actual sales levels. In addition, we have, these are all actual numbers, actual fixed production overheads and actual selling general and administrative costs expressed in dollars. We assume further that opening inventory is zero and on a Marginal costing basis, the profit and loss account for this company over these for each of the two years will look as follows. So the profit and loss shown here, starting with sales for years one and two, less the variable cost of sales. We have opening inventory here of zero, and we have the production costs which are calculated on the basis of 1,000 units produced in the first year at a production cost of $72 per unit. We can see the 72 here from the cost card. That's the basis for our inventory valuation. Less closing inventory because we produce 1,000 units and we sell 950, so we have 50 units left in closing inventory, which is valued at the $72 per unit. So that's deducted from 72,000 to give us cost of sales, variable cost of sales of 68,400. Our variable selling costs in year one will be $2 over the, for the 950 sold or $1,900. And as we can see here, the deduction of both variable production costs and variable selling costs gives, gives us a contribution in year one of $43,700. Now, the actual fixed production overheads and the SGA costs are deducted to give us a profit of $20,200. I'll leave it to the candidate to calculate the year two and to verify that the uh, layout here, the format used for marginal costing, has been followed consistently to arrive in year two at a contribution of $52,900 and at a profit figure of $29,400. And this is just a reminder that inventory has been valued in this, under this method at the variable production cost. Now let's have a look at the same scenario in terms of uh, actual production and sales figures and apply the absorption costing method in building the profit and loss. The first thing we have to do is we have to revise our cost card because we need to introduce a new element to it and that is the fixed production overheads. We need to absorb fixed production overheads into our uh, unit costs. And therefore, unlike the marginal cost um, case, we have an additional cost which is introduced 
here at $15 per unit. This $15 is our overhead absorption rate on a per unit basis. Let's see how this uh, affects our calculation of the profit and loss. For year one, we have the same revenue. 950 units are, are uh, sold. The cost of sales now, we're going to include both the variable and the fixed cost of sales. So our in opening inventory is zero. Production costs will be variable at $72 as before. And here we can see the influence now, the $15 are presented, are represented as well in our production costs. And our closing inventory, the units reconciliation will be the same as previously calculated, but this time our closing inventory are going to be uh, valued at $87, the full production, uh, the absorbed uh, cost of production. That's 87 to $72 plus the $15. Now we mustn't forget that in this calculation we have absorbed $15,000 worth of fixed overheads, but in the uh, scenario we're working with, the actual fixed overheads were $16,500, therefore we have not um, reflected the full amount of the actual fixed overheads. We have to make that adjustment here by adding to our cost of sales 1500 And in this way, we end up with a gross profit calculation of $29,850. Um, following which, we deduct the selling costs, whether they are fixed or variable, they come after the gross profits of the absorption costing system and we arrive at a final profit of 20950 The candidate is invited to go through year two numbers following consistently the same story and uh, notice that in year two, um, 1100 units are absorbing $15 per unit of fixed overhead cost, 16500 Therefore, there's no adjustment uh, required. And the final profit will be $28,650. Now, there's a lot more we could say about the relationship between the um, profit figures calculated uh, and, the, and a comparison between the absorption and marginal costing methods. But for our purposes now, it's important just to make sure we have the formats and the calculation methods clear. And this is summarized in the following table here. Absorption costing and marginal costing. What actually enters into the, into the calculations of the cost of sales? Here, the, for absorption costing, the emphasis is on production. And for marginal costing, it's on variable costs. Notice the distinction here, definition of gross profit for absorption costing and contribution for marginal costing.